Hey everyone, welcome to another interview with another very special person, Rohan. Um, Rohan is currently pursuing his master's in MIS uh, from UMBC. And today we are going to talk to him about uh, tips and tricks, his experience uh, so far with pursuing master's at UMBC. But before we get started, uh, I would love to hear from you, uh, Rohan. Uh, hi, I'm Rohan and I've been uh, here since almost nine months. I came in last fall, that is fall 2021. And I'm in uh, MIS program right now, uh, manage uh, master's in information systems. And that's it. It's, it's, in, it's now my second semester, almost done. And I'll be... Uh, going for my independent study this summer as well as then the fall semester starting soon that's it okay yeah thank you that was a quick introduction uh, so uh, before we get into the questions about your current experience mm -hmm. um, i know when you have when you when you have started for you know looking for masters when you started thinking about masters you must have built your profile and then applied to few universities got few admits mm -hmm you know, and then finalized UMBC. Yeah. So can you take us through that process? Like what was your profile? So, how many you had? So should I tell like uh, just six months before or, or how, what was situation at that time or should I start with that thing? Uh, start with uh, uh, your profile. Uh, okay, maybe. so uh -huh. I didn't have much experience. I just, every, uh, the only thing I continued was every summer I used to do some random internship, whatever. As the mm -hmm. role, whatever I got, I did that internship, whether uh, mostly there were nothing was paid. So I just did because I wanted some experience every year. Mm -hmm. uh, during my uh, engineering, I did my diplomas and after my diploma directly, I uh, came to my second year of engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what is happening uh, right now in Maharashtra. Uh, most of the students do like that. So I was into my final years and uh, during the month of like Jan, I just decided that I'll go with... Uh, uh going abroad mm -hmm. i had a already a, a, a plan but i had finalized that I'll, i'm fixing everything right now i gave my lts in the month of jan last year mm -hmm. and uh, but uh the preparations were from very long time but mm -hmm. finalizing that i'm going for my masters was done in jan um, and then i had by the way i had five backlogs <laughs> <laughs> got it and, okay uh, this this was in month of December. I cleared my backlogs. Uh, I had my, my M3, M3 critical uh, and still I am here. I'm wondering how, how it was uh, the situation that time. And yeah, in Jan, I decided everything. Uh, let's go for it. And then I applied for colleges. The most important thing was I didn't give GRE that time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I had no certainty that on what basis they'll approve me. I just have ILTS and I have my uh, diploma score. I have my um engineering school that's it i applied to 11 colleges at that at that time and from those 11 colleges i only one got rejected and others all got accepted and the rejection was from csu lb mm -hmm. i was expecting that college but i didn't get it it was that it is a very good college uh, from that i chose umbc there was northeastern in it northeastern uh, mis program then uh, then again it was there was cleveland uh, there's a uh, one more story about cleveland if you would like i would tell if you have time um mm -hmm. then we have illinois then we have depaul and asu mis um uh, from all these i choose umbc uh, right. and yeah i'm here now <laughs> so uh, that is interesting because now uh, that you shared your admits i can see that you had some really good admits uh, mm -hmm you know, in those 10 admits that you got. Yes, yes. So yes. how did you actually finalize the UMBC over others, NU, ASU, or um, IUB, these? Yeah, so in this period, I contacted many people, many people who stayed here, their advices. Uh, the first advice that I got was, if it is not the top 10, then all colleges are same. So... I got a little more deeper. So this trip I got clear because none of the none of the colleges are top ten, or neither they are very good or neither they are very popular. Uh, so no, let's go to next step. Now, are the courses relevant to what I want? So I wanted. I was I was I was a person who didn't wanted to go in algorithms, but I like going into data. I like. It's not that uh, I can't do coding. I can do, but I don't like algorithms. Hmm. Uh, so something I wanted in this field. Mm -hmm. So so that's why I didn't go for CS. 
and that's how i searched for the courses in these uh, colleges so mm-hmm. i was pretty much excited about asu mis but mm-hmm. the scene was the this asu mis course was uh, offered in some other polytechnic college which is outside tempe or mm-hmm. on the outskirts of tempe so Got i it. Want, wanted it on in the main campus so that mm-hmm. was the main reason i didn't choose go, go for asu mis and most of the uh, people in this college are almost all indians so mm-hmm. i didn't go for um, uh, asu mis that was plus and the i20 fees of asu mis is around 55k mm-hmm. uh, and that was my uh, one of the concerns then again the next is northeastern mm-hmm. uh, northeastern's indian community is very good uh, i was into the indian community i actually paid fees i paid around 30 45000 for my seat and uh, for the 500 dollars that you have to pay i think to yeah 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 i paid the money then then i came into a group there is a discord group there they have very good community uh, of uh, how to handle people who are coming from abroad uh, they are each group is there for how to ha- handle uh, f1 visa how to uh, prepare for uh, jobs every group is there in a discord uh, channel so mm-hmm. uh, i made a group for myself i made a group of five people but then at the end i decided uh, that co-op is not for everyone in that college everyone mm-hmm. does not get co-op only limited people get co-op mm-hmm. and uh, from the most people i heard they, they were limiting the job options there and too much people were there from india too much com- competition was there there was less chances of ga ta ra and no, there was very less scholarship and the fees was high the living expenses were high then again i came to the conclusion that uh, that person the, the people studying in nu and Uh, asu umbc would come at the same place uh, at the end of the day mm-hmm. so my so then i moved towards umbc uh, the professors were good uh, the courses was good the fee was good the living expense was as per my choice perfect that was okay. how uh, like i imagined for uh, csu lb right. and uh, yeah then i went for it UM, i went for umbc going to went forward with umbc that's it Got and it. yeah the with cleveland so uh, The, uh, there are few colleges uh, that they keep one person in India, and they'll call the people, uh, saying that uh, you have got admit, and we'll help you with the process, and that's it. I got a call from ASU, uh, I got it from Cleveland, so I just made up excuse for oh, Cleveland State uh, University that uh, I have I have COVID, so I just don't want to come and. i'm very uh, like my family has co- like got covid it's very difficult to come so i don't think it's possible this year because she was calling me every week so uh, she just said that okay you have covid uh, i'm giving you a scholarship of $15000 and uh, and later i denied then again she increased to 20000 then i still d- i didn't go and from this i understood that there are many colleges who lure students just to uh, call them to the campus Mm-hmm. I, I felt this thing because this thing was same at uh, one more campus, NJ, uh, New Jersey. I don't remember the name. NJIT. Uh, NJIT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there is a scholarship there too that they were offering. Uh, our, our, I think around ten thousand. Yeah. So I feel this is something to lure students just to call them at the campus. I feel like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's why I didn't go for Cleveland or any of these. Even though their uh, I twenty is very low, everything was low. Their I twenty was just twenty twenty thousand, twenty two thousand. wow so that's that's pretty low yeah that's very low and uh, this concerns me also that uh, during what, what what will happen in visa what if they say that why do you choose this college over umbc or asu so it was very difficult uh, to choose even even with the scholarship to go for cleveland got it got it understood uh, well thank you for walking us through this uh, and all the colleges that you applied to were uh, accepting only ielts score right they didn't require any gre Yes, yes, yes. Ah, uh, but now again they have started with the GRE thing. The in the northeastern especially have started with GRE. Ah, uh, but as of now, even UMBC is not requiring for MIS program. There is no GRE required. Um, and yeah, that's it. And even ah, uh, I think Colorado State University is now starting. Uh, I apply to that also. I got admit. But now they are ah uh, got they have started with again GRE. Um, what else? Yeah, that's it. And ASU again has started with the GRE. So right. again, we are back to the track where everyone wants GRE. Normal, normal track. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Got it. And guys, for all of you who are wondering, okay, what what is that list of eleven colleges which uh, Rohan applied to? So what I'll do is I'll maybe request him and you know put that list in the description section below. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just for you to explore. You know, don't directly apply. Explore first. 
uh, evaluate right uh, now uh, let's move on let's move on uh, and get started with the first interview or first question which is more about expenses now everyone is the first thing comes in mind is okay how much money i'm going to put in right so in terms of umbc what is like the total fees that you will end up paying over two years and how much are your expenses month in month out and if we can extrapolate it to two years okay so uh, when you are here if you uh, like the if you when you are here it's like first semester uh, without any ta ga without any in state uh, the fees would be around around $12000 one semester so and yeah uh, depending on courses cs has little more expense uh, is is little less uh, is will have around 11000 but every year due to inflation i just saw that um, current year i20 is in the amount is increased by $2000 so the mm-hmm. total cost of tuition fees uh, for one year is around $24000 for mm-hmm. this year the current i20 new i20 and mm-hmm. ours was 22 000 so that is a difference i observed there was maybe there was a inflation so yeah and this is the tuition fees for one year and then again if you come back to the living expenses housing housing if you if you are living in a shared house then uh, around me where where i stay including the month rent including the food including wifi bill electricity it comes around 550 to 500 in between these ranges mm-hmm. so it is it is uh, it is good and if you want to live alone in a apartment then it is costly then then mm-hmm. um, then it will be little costly if you want to know uh, like ranges uh, of apartment one bhk will cost you uh, around 1000 dollars then mm-hmm. two bhk will cost you around 1250 to 1350 dollars and three bhk uh, will cost you around uh, 2800 dollars these are the ranges that uh, housing around my campus the Got it. got it got it so uh, 24000 24 24 let's say for two years 48000 dollars mm. and uh, and i assume last semester is little bit lighter right so the fees will be little bit less yes yes definitely yeah 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 fees will be less so about 40000 let's say let's assume about 40 45000 dollars for fees yes 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 and and then five, uh, let's say 600 per month so mm-hmm. that comes around 15000 for two years Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. So about sixty thousand dollars for the whole masters is what you're looking mm-hmm. at. Yeah. Uh, now you uh, you touched upon uh, the living expenses. So what are some of the communities around UMBC where generally people live? Is it safe? Uh, is it close to the university? Is it away from the university? How's the uh, uh, travel? <clears throat> if you can talk about that. Uh, many people ask me. Many of them ask me. Is Baltimore safe? everyone asked me that is it safe is it really safe rohan we heard that uh, the city is not safe uh, if you ask me every city in us is not safe and okay. if you are talking about baltimore umbc umbc lies in the county region and it is a little far from city and where we are currently it is very safe mm-hmm. uh, campus has its own police campus uh, has its own parameter where uh, it's everything is safe and where we stay that area is also safe but i would recommend uh, if you go on a walk at say more uh, at 11 o'clock it's dangerous uh, that's mm-hmm. that, that is obvious uh, go on late night walk uh, anywhere mm-hmm. it is dangerous but uh, um, above all this everything is good got it uh-huh. and the mm-hmm. community around me everyone is mostly where, where, where i stay is all indians everyone uh, all mm-hmm. are indians mostly and yeah there are bangladeshi community also they are very good they also stay uh, near us so we all stay closely close nearby mm-hmm. not much far we have bus facility over there uh, the bus the bus is on every uh, every one hour there is a bus every half an hour there is a bus that mm-hmm. takes us to college and the college is around like uh, 10 minutes by mm-hmm. walk if you go and like 2 minutes if you go by bus uh yeah mm-hmm. and bus is free uh, campus bus is free it takes to downtown it takes to uh, airport <laughs> so if uh, if people who are coming right now in the fall uh, uh let me remind you there is a bus facility from umbc to bwi that we have uh and that is uh, every hour got so it. these are the facilities that, is, that, that umbc gives that is really helpful that is really yeah. helpful because at least in san Fran- like san jose I, so i live in san jose um, mm. so whenever people come to san jose state university 
generally they will land at SF um, SFO, which is SF Airport, mm -hmm. right? And they have to either book a cab or book a van, uh, you know, to come because it's there's like fifty miles distance, forty five fifty miles. Oh. So uh, this is, I, I think this is very helpful. Uh, when there's directly a bus, you just take the bus, mm -hmm. go to the, and if you know the community where you are living, like the society name, then most probably the bus goes around it. So you can, you know, uh, yeah. Go and then your friends can help you with, you know, get getting in and everything. Uh, we do also have an app where it shows how, what is the current status of bus? Where is it right now? What time will the next bus come? Where are the stops? So we have an app for it also. So that is good. That is mm -hmm. good. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. Actually, that was pretty detailed. Mm -hmm. Now moving a little bit on uh, in terms of uh, on-campus jobs, right? Uh, now you have about $45,000 of fees. Mm -hmm. So first question is, if you get a TARA or a greater job, does yeah. that reduce your fees? Okay. Uh, so if you are just talking about my, uh, my uh, department, my uh, information system department, we have a little less funding compared to what CS has. Mm -hmm. uh, CS will get everything waived off. Uh, uh, fee waiver, there's a fee waiver there. They have little more payment than, than us because they have more funding. Uh, in our case, uh, professor has, we have to make a contract in such a way that he'll give us in state. Um, it's, a, it's a contract thing. Uh, it's not a full fee waiver. We'll, we'll get an in-state. If he has a funding, then we'll get an in-state. And I just got an in-state. So I'm a, I'm a research assistant. So we, we get an in-state. Uh, if we have, uh, let's say the fees was for me for last semester was 11,000. This semester it reduced to around, I think six, 7,000. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is a difference of in-state that we have. Uh, and yeah, and uh, if you compare, uh, the the payment by RA uh, the CS and IS department CS has more payment than IS that mm -hmm. is what I have I have observed yeah that is what the scenario is right now got it got it uh, but we do have there are many uh, many people saying that uh, we don't have GA we don't have TA we don't have RA we have a lot of RA we have a lot of uh, research opportunities here in UMBC lot of you lot, lot of research research uh, research opportunity here and recently I think UMBC got R1 category in research by CMU so it is one of got the it. very good research institute right now got it got it that helps because uh, a lot of people want to know this when they're even finalizing their admits that yes, okay yeah. if I go there and even if I get RAT I'll be able to reduce my fees even further right mm -hmm. uh, 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 thank you for sharing that. Now, uh, moving to the on-campus scenario, like how is the situation with getting on-campus jobs? How easy or difficult it is? And what are some of the tips? Let's say if someone is coming in fall, mm -hmm. what will be your top three tips for them to get an on-campus job? Okay. Uh, so I would say, uh, first of all, come uh, as early as possible and start searching from the day one. Yes, you'll definitely have it. You'll definitely search for it. Go at every uh, go at every place you see in the campus. Campus is very big. We have an event center. There are a lot of events happening over there. They need a lot of people for hiring. Then they have security in the event center. I, I worked as a security. I just now left it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have uh, security over there. We have cafeterias. We have a lot of lot of places to work uh, in in camp on on the campus. Uh, but you need to approach approach them. You can't sit at home and expect them to reply on your mails. No, you have to go in person, talk to them, get get it done. Uh, that's because that's how we got it. We have to we went to them, we talked to them. That that's how we got it. And uh, I got my um, uh, job as soon as in, I think in, in the next month itself. In September, I got my job. Mm -hmm. And if you ask me about the job payment, uh, they are like uh, they'll start from twelve dollars minimum. Uh, this is yeah. what. Uh, this is what we'll get in cafeteria the the we have 12 dollars up to 22 dollars 22 dollars is for uh, overnight shift at the event center that mm -hmm. is the maximum that we have uh, on the campus got it got it and even if someone makes like a bare minimum 12 dollars i think they still make and end up making like about 800 dollars yes. mm -hmm. which is way more than the 600 dollars that you know yes, they, yes. they would need to you know spend uh, so that is pretty good 
Hmm. Uh, now one more good news would be in our times in covid times campus was open limited hours so they would limit our shift to just to 10 hours per week or maybe they said 8 hours per week but now as the in fall campus will be opening like full fledged they'll keep the uh, the hours till full 20 hours so i think it will be more beneficial for students got it got it uh, so uh, uh, now moving uh, to the curriculum part right how's the curriculum for uh, is information systems uh, department and if someone is coming now in fall mm-hmm. what would be your recommendation about what subjects that they must take for them to be ready for the industry okay so um, it's a very good question um, uh, is in uh, umbc is something inclined towards data side here okay. most of the courses are inclined towards data side Uh, but even uh, even it's inclined if even if it's inclined towards data we have a specialization uh, three specialization options that we have uh, mm-hmm. the student either can choose a specialization in data science he can choose specialization in artificial intelligence specialization in hcc human centered computing uh, these are the three options that we can choose and even the uh, the certificate degree certificate will have that name so mm-hmm. you guys uh, so students can choose uh, whatever specialization they want but i would say it is more inclined towards data side mm-hmm. uh, since uh, the data subjects in this so we had something called as advanced database uh, so this was very good subject uh, it is the, i would say it is the only good subject that i uh, that we got interaction with the professor good very mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. for the people who are coming for fall so it's on the perspective that if you want to take something uh, finish off things faster Mm-hmm. uh then you can take three cores here complete three cores so i would say 6 601 is there uh 603 620 mm-hmm. these are the three subjects uh that you can go for uh that are full three cores core subjects and uh, if you want to do something light that if you think that this was my perception i thought that i wanted to take, take something light because uh what if i am not uh, adjusting to the environment i want to mm-hmm. get easier with how it uh, how the environment is i want to see how the courses are so first i thought uh, let's take two electives and one course so that uh, let's see how it is going how it is how the subjects right. so if you are if with that perspective you can go with this plan take two electives and one course or if you want to go something like okay i can do it yes i i i think i can do it just go for three courses and that's that's it like then then continue on with whatever you feel that's that's great that's great now uh, <clears throat> uh walk us through your uh decision process of let's say you must have had some positions in your mind that okay once i graduate uh from my masters these mm-hmm. are the jobs that i want to work in right let's say now just to give an example let's say software engineer right mm-hmm. for you it would be a little bit different but what were those profiles that you want to work in after your masters and how are you structuring your courses around that okay so uh, first of all when i when i was about to come here i was thinking i'll go with health data analyst this aid, this side got uh, it i'll work on health data uh, because in umbc and around this region of bay area everything is about health health data and health got uh, it so this was little uh, exciting for me because i saw in covid era what was lacking in us what mm-hmm. was uh, from where uh, which part of which segment of people were earning more so mm-hmm. i thought i'll give this a try because this is something that is going to boom in future right so i i chose i'll go in this health data even my subjects are relating to this around this so um, so after i came in september i started working with my professor in ra uh, so in uh, umbc it's like first uh, for working as an ra they they just you have to work for free volunteer because they have a lot of work here and they want to see whether you can do it or no mm-hmm. so during that time i was given a neuro icu data so work work with the icu data mm-hmm. that made me move towards something uh, towards data engineering field of in, mm-hmm. in health data got so it now now i am more interested uh, in data engineering rather than just data analyst mm-hmm. or health data analyst i am more into data engineering field After, so after my uh, this thing um, i would i would certainly search for something in data engineering health data engineering something like this that is great that is great and i ask this question because a lot of people want to have this clarity 
you know uh, while they are making the decision so this helps uh, uh, you know uh, now moving on to the last part uh, or the last almost the last question how is the scenario with internships and full time uh, do you see your classmates getting internships very easily getting full time very easily uh, if so where are they getting these jobs okay so uh, i would say uh, yes my my seniors right now uh, they got most of them got in amazon uh, most of them are got in very uh, good companies around uh, baltimore uh, but the work was not in baltimore they were mostly remote or they had to go there relocation mm-hmm. was there um, so yes they were mostly amazon but for the sd roles they applied for the sd roles because mostly the, their reply was uh so i asked why not data analyst or why not data engineering they said first we'll go for sd then then maybe i'll go for some other uh, what mm-hmm. i like because that's how they were finding it easier to get first sd and then go for whatever they like got so it. yeah most of them got via uh, you, this uh, uh, s0 in amazon most of them got in amazon even cs people got in amazon um because uh, recently i think there's a new um, Amazon office opened in Virginia. In Virginia, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, many many got uh, relocated in. I think the my super seniors they got relocated in uh, NY. They got relocated in, uh, but most of them from Amazon only. And I have been in two career uh, the 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 career fairs in this two mm-hmm. semesters. The thing I saw was the there were the local companies uh, coming up in the career fairs, but not the big companies. Mm-hmm. So. uh and very few people uh, from our batch got into those companies that that was my most keen observation on these and mm-hmm. student who did on their own who searched for their own companies they got earlier than the people who were trying for a career fairs right and i would say like uh, at the end it's on you to search the job companies won't come to you uh, as in career fair you have to search and keep applying keep applying and that's how it is right now uh, and that's how everyone is getting into internships that's how everyone is getting into jobs right now we have to apply on our own on our own career fairs are just like they are very the companies that come in career fair are just local companies mm-hmm. they are they are not that that big or they just want green card people into it that's it and right that's that's that, that, that's what i saw got it got it uh, well thank you for sharing that now before we close on today's interview i would like to ask this one last question uh, which is let's say if someone is coming already finalized their umbc that they are coming to umbc this fall right mm-hmm. what would be your top 3 tips for them okay uh top 3 tips mm, i would say pre plan everything before you come make Uh, a group of people, or even if you don't have a group, just find few few friends to. Uh, when you come here, you find a house, you stay here because there's an issue with uh, housings here because because there is a. So what happened last last year? People got remote jobs. The seniors got remote job. So most seniors didn't leave their houses. So there are no vacant houses right now. So they are still living in the houses. So for the coming up people, we have to search for houses, and then they'll get the houses. That's a lengthy process. So housing is one of the important thing I would see uh, look for forward to, and then don't worry about assistantships. It's fine if you don't get, if you, it's fine if you don't get scholarship. It's everything is okay. It 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 doesn't matter. It, also, uh, the third point I would say is, um, just uh, this these subjects are like. If if you get less marks, it's fine. Uh, this mm-hmm. subject, no one asked for marks. Uh, I didn't see anyone, any companies asking for marks. It's fine. Uh, just uh, don't worry about how hard it will be, how tough it will be. It will just move. It go smoothly. Everything will go fine. Uh, just choose your friends wisely, and that's it. Oh, US is open for you. <laughs> uh well thank you so much rohan for you know patiently answering all these questions i'm pretty sure this will help everyone who is watching and guys uh, uh share your favorite tip from today's interview in the comment section below and i'll see you in the next video